Good morning, everyone. I'm not sure if you could hear me inside. I was whispering because, uh, well, everyone is still asleep at the house. All right, we are going to seek out some uphill running. That's right, and up is going to be the key word. Um, basically, this mountain I'm going to, it's called Mount Beerstadt. It's another 14er here in Colorado, and it's a doozy. It's, uh, it's a good one, and it's a perfect opportunity to uh, talk to all of you about why I love running uphill so much, but also some technique ideas if you're interested in uh, improving your uphill work and uh, we've talked about this in the past here on the vlog but I'm excited to dive in again now that it is summertime at least here in Colorado so all right onward and upward as we like to say literally today again let's get some up let's go get some up here we go We made it up Guanella Pass to Mount Beerstadt. You can see it there off in the distance and it's looking very nice. I haven't been here all summer, but just keep in mind, you'll never be, if you're looking for a little solitude up in the mountains, this is not the place to come. It's very busy. A lot of people come here. Actually, tip of the day, across the valley from Mount Beerstadt is some, are some 13ers, so mountains that are not quite 14,000 feet and they are not nearly as busy for some uphill running or uphill uh, speed hiking, if you will. Uh, so anyway, you might want to check out across the valley as well. Um, but the reason uh, you can, I like coming to Beerstadt is that you can get a really good uh, aerobic stimulus at altitude without putting a ton of miles into your legs because you start the running uh, basically right at tree line. So anyway, that is why I like coming to Beerstadt. All right, let's lace up. <laughs> start in the Terra Kiger 5s. That's right. This is the last test before I've done the Wild Horse 5s, the, uh, the Peg 36 Trails, and now the Terra Kiger 5s for the last mountain test before giving you my full opinion and comparing them uh, and how they're performing here in the Rocky Mountains. So, oh yeah. So these are considered the fastest uh, fastest option out there and uh, I will be publishing this comparison but me I saw the cobwebs fall in your eyes it was my now I I can see how your red blood beats more than I will know. Okay, all right, we're we're about to hit the steep sections on Mount Beerstadt, and let's before we hit them, I want to even remind myself what is one of my favorite techniques and tips for uphill running. It's not in my legs, it's in my shoulders. That's right. So putting your shoulders in their pockets, okay? So instead of letting your shoulders shrug forward, you put them back. Just put them in their pockets. That helps so much with posture, with uh, with torque, with your pectoral muscles. So you're, it's just like boom, boom. And when your legs are getting tired, which of course they're gonna get tired running up a big mountain, um, I, I lean into my arms so, so much to help me to help propel me up the mountain as fast as possible so uh, again it's just put instead of shrugging forward which also inhibits your breathing put the shoulder blades in their pockets so just kind of put them back just put them in not too much but just put them back 
and then it creates a little bit of tension here with your pectoral muscle that allows you to just power, just power up that mountain. So that's one thing that I focus on all the time in uphill running. All right, let's keep getting it. Elevation game. Come on now. Sparkling white, they were white. I saw the cobwebs fall in your eyes, yet it was mine. All right, and another uphill running technique and tip is uh, keep your eyes, keep your eyes up. You don't want to look down too much, okay? I, I realize if it's really rocky ground, you need to look down a little bit, but try and keep your eyes up because as soon as you start looking down, uh, your shoulders start to collapse in. It can inhibit your breathing quite a bit. Uh, so keep those eyes up and uh, that'll help with, it'll help with, I, I'm telling you, with everything, with knee drive. With, and I know it's crazy, but it just, it helps with all of your posture and keeping yourself nice and straight up and down as you go up the mountain. So that's what I, uh, and it's easier said than done. It's uh, uh, easy to forget this technique. So eyes up. All the colors you showed me were sparkling white. They were white, 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 white. But me, I saw the cobwebs, the fault in your eyes. It was mine. I, I, I. And another tip for uphill running. Okay, your hip flexors and your upper quads and your quads in general are gonna be working overtime. Therefore, to help counterbalance, and you know when you pull a rubber band taut, in order to help counterbalance how much your hip flexors and quads are gonna be working, I like to really focus in on my upper glutes and my lower back, which basically prevents me from leaning too far forward because you're naturally going to want to lean forward going uphill. It's just what happens. Uh, but you don't want to lean too far forward. And so it just allows you to keep your posture. And I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. Um, it allows you to keep your posture good. And so anyway, it's that taut feeling between your the front of your leg and the back of your leg. All right, let's keep rolling. And another tip for uphill running. All right, you're gonna be, you wanna take shorter, quicker steps. So this is where the fast feet exercises really comes in handy. And uh, like, you don't wanna overstride is what I'm getting at because that's gonna wreck your quads. You're gonna, you're gonna get way too tired, way too quick. And what determine, what helps influence this, how many, uh, how short and quick your steps are is the pitch of the mountain. So obviously if you're racing a, a hilly cross country course in high school, this might not be quite as applicable, but for big mountain runs, big ultra races with a lot of vertical gain, it's that quick feet, short steps, and, and I'm not talking about, uh, what, I'm not talking about uh, speed hiking. That's a whole nother ball game. We'll, we'll uh, touch on that another day. So short, quick steps, and that'll help save your quads a ton. And this is where the suppleness of your Achilles tendon and your ankles comes in so handy. We're getting into the gym, and this is where like the ballet dancers that I've talked about in the past, it just helps to have really good torque through that ankle and Achilles tendon. Oh, so much. All right, let's keep rolling. that in the books. Okay, it's always I struggle to communicate clearly uh, running technique and running form 
it's, it's always better in person, but I hope those little tips and technique ideas uh, will give you at least something to chew on when you're out there running your next set of hills, whether it's in a race or a workout. Um, and again, of course, ask any questions down below in the comments. And if you really, really want to ask a question, make sure I answer. You can look, uh, look me up on Instagram. And I'm pretty good at getting back to people. It usually takes two or three days, but I will get back to you eventually. And one more idea for running uphill with respect to technique and also the mental side of running, which is so critical for uphill efforts. Okay, here we go. I call it cresting the hill. So whether it's a hill, a pitch, uh, a big mountain, maybe it's a 30 meter hill on a cross country course, whatever it might be, if you can maintain your form on the hill, once you get to the crest, so right before the top, that is when I try to basically put the hammer down and make it hurt for every, if it's a race, for everyone around me. Um, and how do I do that? So your legs are gonna be burning as you're going up the hill. Burn, 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 burn. But don't, don't forget, everyone else around you is gonna be burning as well. So once you're at the top, right at that crest, I maintain focus on keeping my head up, uh, pumping my arms, making sure my knee drive is good, but also I do a little, I, do, I remember put the shoulders back and then I just do a little shake. I just do a little shake. And it just like relieves all the tension. If you have some tension built up from that hard effort uphill, just a little, a little shake of the hands and then go. A little shake of the hand and boom. And it's like, it might throw your arm swing off like for a split second, but it just helps me so, so much. Basically hit the reset button after the burn. All right, so that's my last idea for you for running uphill and technique and question of the day, whether it's Heartbreak Hill in the Boston Marathon or Mount Washington, an uphill road race or your local cross country course. What is something in an uphill effort, or maybe it's a workout, what is something in an uphill effort that you struggle with? Whether it's mental, so it could be physical or mental or a combination of both, but is there something that you're noticing in your uphill running that doesn't seem right? Like you're breaking down, your form is like, anyway, so just think, you might have to, you might have to go run some hills and just figure it out for yourself uh, in the next couple days and feel free to come back and ask your questions down in the comments. I love you guys. But okay, we're packing up the van, we're hitting the road, uh, we're going to Illinois for a wedding. It's gonna be crazy and uh, just come along for the journey. Um, so I think that's it. I think that's it. All right. Oh yeah. And yes, the next video, it won't be today. I don't think you never know. You never know. But yes, I will be comparing the Nike trail shoe lineup as soon as possible. All right. Sig beauty. Work hard. Oh, jump.